Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I hope you are all taking care of yourselves, taking all the precautions to keep yourself strong and healthy so you can take care of those you love. I had to get out of the house today and this is one of our local state parks, Beach Fork State Park, and they have a nice trail. If you ever wondered what happened with Christmas trees that were recycled, this is where they end up at uh, Winter Pool, right here on the shoreline. So good luck to all you fishermen to get your lines snagged up in those Christmas trees come summer. So as you can see, we have persistent cloudy skies here in Appalachia. Not too atypical of March, but it's really socked in and it's really limited my astrophotography capabilities. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is an update. Normally I do a video publication once weekly and I already have the next two in the queue. But what is this? This is an update on Comet 2019 Y4 Atlas. It looks like, as you may recall, we had started looking at some of the initial data that really looked promising. Well, a further look on a new resource, and I'm gonna put that link in the description below. And the resource is spaceweather.com. They have a great new update as of March 18th about the outburst and some commentary on it from some scientists and some great imaging. There is an imager, Rolando Ligustri, who's really tracking this comet and providing some nice images for us. And again, I'll post the link. So Space Weather has a an archived page for all images, so it's a great place to stay up to date. Rolando posted an updated image from yesterday showing the comet really in the same field with M81 and M82. And it was just a beautiful composition. Now he's using remote telescopes. I'm gonna start using remote telescopes because of the weather and some other things. And that's actually a video I have coming, is how to go about using a remote telescope and when are the times to use it. So Rolando used that remote telescope to capture the comet and it looks like it has a several arc minute tail to it. And I believe their predictions are still at magnitude eight. Some of the scientists are pontificating that this thing could go one of two ways. It could continue to brighten and be as bright as Venus and viewable actually in the daytime sky. That is if the outgassing that it is doing now, burning the volatile gases that it has, doesn't go at a pace that exceeds all the, its own internal resources. So some are speculating this thing could break up as it gets closer to the sun. There is another course that this thing continues to brighten and looks like Comet McNaught from I believe 2007, which was mainly a treat for the Southern Hemisphere. And we were a little jealous, I believe if I recall correctly, we could only see the tail, barely get above the horizon here in the Northern Hemisphere for Comet McNaught. Are we gonna get our Comet McNaught? Or is this thing going to disintegrate <laughs> before our eyes burn up all of its resources and end up maybe in a broken up coma that glides across the sky? Maybe not quite as dramatic in our landscapes, but still a photographic target. So here's where we are. We're at new moon right now. I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to image it. I encourage you, if you have any type of focal length, 
to go out this new moon period and go ahead and image it. It looks pretty good. I also have, I forgot the NGC number. I also have a potential crossing on April 2nd with NGC, I believe it's 2624. I could have that number wrong. I'll post it. There'll be some video links here that'll supplement my walk on the trail. But that's on April 2nd, around April 2nd, for about a three and a half degree by two and a half degree field of view. So that's one of the few great compositions I see with a deep sky object coming into you know, coming in toward the sun. Bottom line, this is going to be a great comet to photograph. Get out there now if you have a long focal length and grab some images. Don't wait. Don't wait for the next new moon period. I will go ahead and get out there and photograph it. Be mindful, it's going to be picking up speed as it gets closer to the sun. So your exposure times will have to be reduced if you certainly want to freeze the comet against the starry background. You also may want to get familiar with techniques that will stack the comet's coma and isolate the star field and then just start stack the star field. But as the comet gets brighter, we're going to be able to have shorter and shorter exposures. Since we really aren't targeting a deep sky object in the same field for maybe that one exception on April 2nd. I think we're looking at just capturing relatively short exposures for the coma, stacking for noise reduction, probably one minute or less as we head into perihelion. So that's the update on Comet 2019 Y4 Atlas. It looks like a great opportunity right now. Take it if you can. We don't know if this thing's gonna break up as it gets closer to the sun. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it turns out to be a Comet McNaught opportunity for the Northern Hemisphere coming into the late April to May 15th time period. So that's my update on my walk here around Beach Fork amidst all the global issues. I certainly pray for you and your family, that you stay healthy, adhere to all of the recommendations from the health authorities, take care of you, take care of your loved ones, and let's all agree that next time we get out under the stars that we take an extra moment of being in gratitude for each moment we have to share with the universe and to share with God's great creation. Keep in touch. Send me any images that you get. I would love to see them. And look for a new video that's coming out Friday on Star Trails of Lake Vesuvius. I already have one in the books and scheduled for next Friday, and I have several already in mid-production, so there's a lot of content coming, but I like to spread it about weekly apart. But this is just a, an update since Comet 2019 Y4 is really an evolving story. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for joining me on my walk around a very muddy, Beach Fork Lake, and I wish you all the best, and until next time, clear skies.